Hi, and welcome to this video in which I explore the use of Sonic Pi with the uh, software synth Helm, which is Donateware, and which is a fantastic addition to uh, Sonic Pi, because it's very easy to link the two together and to produce some quite nice effects. Now, when I initially looked at this um, earlier in the year, I found it quite complex to find my way into it and only really scratched the surface. This was because at that time the manual was not actually released for Helm, but I'm glad to say that it now is, and I've got a copy of it back here. And it's very well written and makes it really very straightforward to find your way through how to use this synth and its many features. There's a comprehensive table of contents at the beginning and the thing that makes it very attractive to use with Sonic Pi is this MIDI Learn section right at the beginning here and that is that you can take any of the knobs or sliders uh, which make up the interface, you can right click on it and a little message pops up saying learn MIDI assignment. If you click on that you can then send a MIDI CC or MIDI control chains message to it on one of the channels, uh, one up to 127, and um, when it, you do that, it links onto that particular control and any further messages sent with that MIDI CC number can be used to adjust the setting of that slider. In this particular case, I've used two um, of these uh, settings. One to adjust the volume of the um, synthesizer here and the other to adjust the beats per minute which is actually going to affect things when you use um, one of the arpeggiating um, uh, patches uh, because the rate at which the arpeggiation takes place depends on the BPM setting which you have here. And so in order to keep these in sync with Sonic Pi we need to be able to adjust that BPM setting so that it correlates to the uh, beats per minute which you are using in Sonic Pi if you want to things, keep things together nicely. And uh, the volume is just a way of illustrating another control. We can fade this synthesizer in and out as we play it. I'm not going to go into the many other features which are on here. They do take a bit of getting into, but with the excellent manual it doesn't take too long to run through the various settings. Um, there are a whole series of preset um, patches which you can use to get started with this. I started with one of the arpeggiating ones, CM Clear App, and I've got my own version there, uh, CM Clear uh, uh, in fact I misspelled it, I've called it ARP, the RBM, it doesn't matter. That's what I'm actually using at the moment, and um, by doing this uh, we can actually record these um, MIDI CC settings which have been incorporated and so you only have to set them up and resave a patch with a different name if you like and then you can reuse it. So let's bring up Sonic Pi and see how this all works. Here I've got a program which is going to use MIDI control. Um, I've set up a virtual port called IAC Driver Sonic Pi using the uh, MIDI Audio um, utility on my Mac here and um, I'm using that as the port and I'm sending MIDI messages out on channel 1. Um, this BPM setting here runs from 300 BPM at the top and a minimum value of 20 down at the bottom so what I've done here is to write a little scaling um, function which takes into account this 20 and that we go up to 280 and as far as the MIDI CC message is concerned it can export a number between 0 and 127 and so by scaling this I can cover the range from 20 up to 300 beats per minute um, by putting that in as the uh, value here, V, in this function and it will automatically send the right CC value to um, the control. Uh, so we're going to start up by keep recording the BPM we're going to use which is a very slow one, 20 beats per minute to start with and I've got here a flag which I'm also going to use for the tempo adjustments because what I'm going to do is in this program is to slowly increase the tempo from 20, I think I go up to about, uh, let's see, where is it? Um, I go up 
to very tempo here we are 180 if it's above 180 I change this flag over and it's going to start falling again so it's gradually going to get faster and faster and faster when it reaches a tempo of 180 or greater than 180 it's going to drop again uh, and it gets down to 40 um, below 40 and then it'll start rising again in the same way the volume setting here you can see changes uh, with maximum of two and a minimum value of naught. So again, with um, an input uh, in a MIDI CC message of naught up to 127, we need to scale that. And I've got that done here in this VSET function, which is going to scale the input um, by multiplying it by 127 and dividing it by 2. And that means that as we go from naught up to 127, um, sorry, from 0 to 2, we will produce uh, the relevant range uh, between 0 and 127. And so I've previously done the learning process, which I refer to uh, up here in the comments. Um, so to assign the BPM control to MIDI CC10, what I did was to right click on this and to choose Learn MIDI Assignment. I've already done it, so I won't do it again. And then I simply ran a little program in Sonic Pi, which uh, had this in it. Um, where are we? Um, down here. Um, the program that we sent was MIDI CC um, 10, comma 40. The actual number there doesn't matter, and then stop. So as soon as it recognizes this has been sent, it picks up that that came from channel 10 and it will assign that to the um, BPM uh, control there. And in the same way, you can right click on this one and choose Learn MIDI Assignment. And then, oh, I actually did that this time. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just to go back here and to reload that and say done and that'll reset it back to where it was um, and we do the same thing but sending um, MIDI CC 20 um, I used 80 there to it so that it picks that up so that's how we do that and then we're going to <coughs> control this by having um, a live loop which is going to use the BPM which is currently set here that will be actually varied in another live loop further down it's going to send that value out to Helm, where it will be picked up on channel 10, and it's going to adjust this slider here. And it's going to then send um, a, a note chosen from uh, a C4 minor pentatonic scale, and it's going to then sleep for a quarter of a second and keep on going round that. But as it does so, it's going to find that this BPM value is going to change, so it will actually get faster and slower. Uh, another live loop, MT2, does exactly the same thing, except it's going to use a lower pitch, uh, C1 as opposed to C4, and it's got slightly different timing, so that the notes will uh, change at different times. Then we get a section down here which is going to adjust the volume, and again we set the initial volume to be zero here we set the flag for whether it's increasing or decreasing to be plus one and inside this loop we get the uh, current volume we get the value of the flag and we multiply it by 0 0.1 and so it's going to increase by 0 0.1 each time we go around this loop it's going to send it scaled to the volume setting here and um, when the volume setting is bigger than 1.9, we've reached the end of the scale here. It's going to change the flag and make it get smaller till it goes down to zero again. And it'll start to get faster again, and it's going to go around that loop to do that. Here's the tempo varying well, which I think I've already discussed. The same, so in principle, it's exactly the same as that, except it's going to adjust the tempo, the tempo between these limits, <coughs> and then. We get the audio which is produced by um, the uh, helm, and I'm actually using a little program called Loopback, um, which comes from. Oh, let's get the window showing here. Loopback, where are we? 
here. Sure windows. Uh, the loopback window, which is going to um, set up um, a link between the output of Helm, allowing it to be fed in to the default input channels one and two, so that the audio can come back into Sonic Pi um, as we had before. Oh, we've gone, there we are. That's got back to where we were. And uh, that's inside a compressor, and it's also inside a reverb loop. Here is the audio coming in, <clears throat> and I've also got uh, a live loop called drums, which is simply going to set the tempo set by the BPM um, setting, which we're adjusting further up here. So that this will keep in step with everything else. And we're going to simply play a BD zone sample, and we're going to adjust its volume according to the current volume setting set, and just add a bit of rhythm using this spread function here. And so, having talked about it, let's just start it going and see how the whole thing behaves. You can see the volume increasing here. You can see the BPM fluctuating. And you can hear the results. Notice that the drums stay synchronized because their BPM is changing as well. Stop it there. So I hope you can see that it's possible to get a very close linkage between Helm and Sonic Pi. We could also have other MIDI CC things to adjust some of the other features. For example, perhaps adjusting the distortion on the um, let's just leave that. Uh, adjusting the distortion on the um, synth, or indeed adjusting some of the filters. Maybe adjusting a cutoff. Um, as, as you can do in Sonic Pi with some of the other uh, inbuilt synths, like for example TV303, which can be used very effectively. But I think you can see that this gives a whole range of added features which will link into Sonic Pi very nicely. So thank you for watching. Um, the actual code for this is not very long. Uh, if you want, you can try and copy it down from here. But I will publish it on a gist and there will be a link below this video which will show you where you can get hold of it. And you can download um, the Sonic Pi, uh, download Helm um, from their uh, website. Um, and uh, I haven't actually got the actual link here, um, but uh, you can look it up by simply Googling for Helm Synth and you'll get it there. And again, I'll add this to the bottom of the video. So thank you very much for watching.